Hi, my name is Ani Pichova and I work for AWS Professional Services. Today, James, Solution Architect from AWS and I, we are in conversation with Matt Office. So let's start from you. Please tell uh, us your name, your mm -hmm. role and what your team does for Matt Office. My name is Armeni Pint. I'm a Solutions Architect here at the Met Office and uh, I lead uh, a team called the Data Services and uh, what we do is actually written on the team. We develop the systems and the services that uh, kind of connect our data suppliers to our data, data consumers and we are now fully hosted on AWS. Awesome, thank you. And you? My name is Chris Payton. Mm -hmm. I'm a Solution Architect in the Met Office's digital space. Uh, I work with three teams and we look after the public facing infrastructure uh, and the architecture that sits behind it, serving up our website and our app and uh, something else that's coming soon that I'll be talking about later. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Dave Hunter. Um, I'm the solution architect for the government services um, and in terms of stack, we're pretty high up at the top mm -hmm. uh, and we write applications directly interfacing with our government customers, so for like our first responder community and our local government. So it seems that your teams are representing all the layers of Met Office. Can you tell me more about uh, the nature of challenges your teams have when it comes to, to serving your customers? Sure. Um, so uh, diversity of uh, data sets, it's one of the big challenges that we have. We have um, a great number of teams uh, that produce important data sets. Uh, so the most widely used uh, is our forecasts, mm -hmm. but we also have observations climate data, uh, we have sensor data, uh, and um, uh, there is not a one-to-one -one relation between those data producers and the data consumers. Uh, that means that um, if we don't have uh, a well-defined and well-architected and well-hosted uh, data services, uh, call it layer, uh, it quickly becomes into uh, a mess, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what my team, what my, why my team exists, is to prevent uh, that uh, lack of governance to exist. Uh, so our two main objectives are basically decoupling mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the data consumers from the data producers, mm -hmm. and at the same time, keep an eye on uh, the, the cost of ownership of delivering the total cost of ownership of delivering those services, which is uh, one of the, another big benefit we got by, by hosting ourselves on AWS. Awesome, thank you. So what are the challenges for you? For us, well, mm -hmm. it might come as news to some people, but uh, the weather is mm -hmm. quite unpredictable. <laughs> and uh, the nature of that unpredictability means that so is our traffic. So, uh, for example, when the Met Office issues a warning of severe weather, it, people will naturally respond to that by coming to the website or to the Met Office app to look for information. As soon as they hit our website, we've got a massive demand for data. We have a surge that can be hard to predict. And as that data uh, mm -hmm. is requested, our challenge is serving it quickly enough so that customers get an equal user experience, whether they're the first customer requesting it or the last customer requesting it. And building an infrastructure that can meet that challenge, especially in today's device-driven, portable data-driven, I want it now driven society, uh, can be a real challenge. And that is, uh, that is the one that we're scaling up to meet right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so unlike um, sort of Chris's area where he works with the, the wider general public, which is a massive, uh, vast number and scalability is a particularly big issue for him, my area is more focused on discrete sets of users. So scaling is not such the issue, but it's the diversity of the customers that I have to support. Mm -hmm. So I have to work with um, our flood forecast center, uh, which deals with, uh, it's, a, it's a partnership with the Environment Agency where we deal with flooding and getting that message out to our first responder community, which is another set of users I have to work with, who are our sort of fire crews, ambulance, local government, and we've got to get important messaging out to them quick so they can respond in a, in a state of emergency or if there's a warning coming. Um, so speed of issue is a big one for us, less about scale, but more about how quickly we can get information out to people so they can make good decisions. That's where really cloud has really helped us with getting that information quickly from effectively the data that our many of those teams are providing straight through to our users. Mm -hmm. Using a specific example of recent snowfalls in the UK, so can you tell me about uh, maybe your interaction between teams? So how did it look? I assume it started uh, 
with your team when customers started to hit the website? So with, how did it with look? The, the public. Yeah. So one thing I have to say first of all is that we're building the infrastructure, so it's a little complex at the moment. So our app. Mm -hmm. uh, the Metaphys app is currently sat on, uh, an, on AWS. Mm -hmm. It's a slightly older infrastructure, which we're now moving into a newer, mm -hmm. uh, uh, more responsive infrastructure, but that, uh, that's still sat on AWS. So what happens if the weather's severe, such as in a snow event, the Met Office will issue a warning. Uh, our Met Office app will, will alert people by a push notification mm -hmm. to the fact that warning exists. Instinctively then, they'll, uh, they'll feel it, they'll hear it, they'll, uh, yeah. they'll uh, okay. get their phone out and they'll look at the Metaphys app. As soon as they do that, there's a demand for data. So we're, we're, we're causing the problem ourselves by actually saying, oh, look, here, here's, a, here's a warning, respond. And we want people to respond. We want people to open the app. We want them to look at the weather and then see what the warning is and take action. So immediately we generate a massive amount of load. People are hitting that. Perhaps then they'll go to the website. Mm -hmm. The website is an externally hosted CMS, again, private cloud, not AWS at this point, but may well be in the future. And that's back-ending onto our legacy infrastructure. It's that legacy infrastructure uh, which currently is, is causing us a problem. It will not scale, uh, it has limited capability, and what we're finding is that we're having to manage that load very, very carefully. So what we're now looking to do is cope with that massive traffic by moving off that legacy infrastructure mm -hmm. onto the same scalable central platform of AWS that can cope with the load from both this app traffic and this web traffic in the future.